Wasn't that a cool bumper? Come on, give it up for Pastor RJ and the creative team. I just like to shout them out every once in a while. I don't know, I thought that was really cool. I can never in a million years do that, so I always like to appreciate those who do. Well, I'm thrilled today. We are kicking off our KB convention with one of our Kingsway missionaries, um, Dennis and Jenny Duncan, currently serve in the nation of Turkey, and they've been there for nine years, and prior to that, uh, they were church planters in the Boston area and then in Pennsylvania, and then Jenny was a uh, professor on staff um, at the University of Valley Forge, so I'm excited. We had a great 9 o'clock service. I know you're going to enjoy hearing about what God is doing in the nation of Turkey. So would you do me a favor? Would you give a warm Kingsway welcome to missionary Dennis Duncan? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Arlena. Yeah. You guys have been supporting us for all nine years we were in Turkey. We thank you for your prayers of support. And we did, uh, yeah, we were church planners in Boston, worked at the University of Valley Forge. And then in our 50s, God called us to move overseas to the nation of Turkey. Can anybody say, wow? <laughs> You're never too old to be called, Ever, never too young. So God calls all ages, all people. So here we are getting called in our 50s. So we moved over there in the year 2015. And uh, so the first thing you do is uh, you just try to adapt to the culture and learn the language. And if you don't know too much about Turkey, it's a pretty good-sized country, 85 million people. But there are very, very few Christian Turks. So if I were to put it this way, only one or two out of every 10,000 Turks are followers of Jesus. One or two. So that's a lot of work to do. So we're here in this context, and we're learning. And After our first year, a couple of years, we moved out to the city of Antalya, Turkey. My beautiful wife is here on our prayer card photo, which we do have some in the back after the service. And uh, she'll be joining us for the next service. But... Uh, the next city, uh, next photo shows our city, Antalya, Turkey. And uh, we're right on the Mediterranean coast of the southern part of Turkey. And this is the fastest growing city in, in Turkey. It's the fastest growing city, really, of Europe because uh, Turkey is on two continents, uh, both Europe and Asia. And uh, we live, our house is right there in the middle of that. We've been down there several, several years now. Uh, so, wow, what a daunting task to move to a Muslim nation and to try to reach people for Christ. Now, I wasn't prepared for Muslim ministry. Uh, our background was here in America. We did do urban ministry. We did church planning there. But wow, we're just like, God, you need to help us. How many know God, when, we, when he calls you, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and he, he, he's going to guide you. He's going to help you. He's going to resource you. And that's what happened. We Basically, as we're praying down in our city, how can we reach? How can we touch people? God opened a door for us to reach people through English, through English conversations. We fa actually found a, an app online called Meetup that some of you may have heard. And there was a group of people in our city having a group at a local Starbucks. So when you come visit us in Ontario, you can go to Starbucks and get your Starbucks fix. We have it there. And these young people were sitting around a table just having conversation in broken English. We joined them, and we had a wonderful time. Well, that inspired us. About a month later, we formed our own group, and uh, we just put on that app. says, we're a group of people pursuing life together through friendships, through fun activities, through English conversations, and we just start posting events, so hikes and picnics and things like this, and people sign up. People start showing up. We actually even put on the app, we do all of our activities based on Christian principles in a Muslim context. You know what? I didn't say this in the first service. Over 3,000 people have signed up for our group. <laughs> Amen. Look at the, this is our first, our first activity we did. This is, we, we took a hike up into the canyon and uh, we have a beautiful water that you can jump in, put these vests on, you climb on these rocks, you, there's actually a little waterfall in there. And these three Turks uh, signed up and came out and they speak good English and we're just hanging out where they became our friends. And they just kept coming out to activities and actually, you know, we, we, are, we just live out our faith in front of them. And, but Ali John, who's standing on the right, 
uh, wasn't interested. Actually, he wanted to talk about his girlfriends all the time. <laughs> I said, that's all right, Allie John. But he kept coming, kept coming. Well, let me tell you, what we do is we do all these things. We live out our faith in front of them, and we always have opportunity to try to invite them to our spiritual activity. He wasn't interested, interested very much, but four years later, something happened in Ali John's life. His father passes away, and at the a funeral, the local imam comes to help perform, but the first words out of the imam's mouth was, where's my money? And our friend was like, that's what you want to talk about first? He was so upset. Well, we had an Easter program right after that, and he comes to our Easter program. After the Easter program, he goes, Dennis, I'm ready to study the Bible with you. Yeah. I mean, he was so, like, basically, I think he said in his mind, that's it, I'm done with Islam. I'm going to go learn how to be a Christian. <laughs> and that's what he did. I took him through the book of Romans every week. He was faithful. One, Romans 2, Romans 3, all the way to Romans 10. We got to Romans 10. If, if you should be familiar with this, it says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is the Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I said, Ali John, we've been talking about Jesus all this time. Do you believe this? He goes, yes, I do. Are you ready to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? He goes, yes, I am. And he received Jesus right there, asked him into his heart. Hallelujah. After the prayer, he goes, I'm saved, I'm saved. Well, we baptized him in the Mediterranean Sea the next month. When he comes out of the water, he goes, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. So look at the next photos. Uh, the next photo is him at a, on a hike in the mountain, bringing his family. Other people are joining us. The next photo shows us rafting. Look at that. We're rafting. There was, we have beautiful waters. Every year we take a rafting trip. People find us on the app. They sign up. They come out. The next one shows me introducing American football to the Turks. That's right. They know how to kick a ball. They don't. It's funny to see them try to throw that ball. <laughs> but we do. We, we introduce football. Guess what we do after the game? We huddle and I share a moral story from the Bible. Hallelujah. I'm preparing them for, for spiritual life. And so we do this. The next photo shows us, I believe, in a cafe. Yeah, we're doing life coaching sessions. I, I advertise, hey, we're, doing, we're life coaches. We're, we're going to talk about this topic this week. Come on. Look at all the people sitting around there listening. There was about 20 people coming out. People from all over the Middle East. There's Russians. There's Turks. There's Lebanese. There's, there's Kazakhs there. There's people from all over that are coming. They want to practice their English. They want to hang out with us. And the next photo, I uh, believe, is our, our Turkish breakfast. Wow, this is uh, what, what's happened here. We want to improve our Turkish. We find this language school, and the owner is sitting in this uh, picture, and he says, well, you, would you help our students practice their English? So we have a trade-off, and the man standing in the back is a doctor, is an emergency doctor, one of our Turkish hospitals. He came into a private room, one-on-one -on -one session with me, and the first thing he wanted to talk about was God. And he says, why aren't the Christians and Muslims together? He couldn't understand. We serve the same God, don't we? And for the next hour and a half, I was talking to him about the differences of Christianity and Muslim and the Muslim faith. And when he came out of that classroom, he actually told my wife, Jenny, this in the other classroom, the conversation I had with your husband just changed my life. <laughs> well, guess what? We are now in his home every week doing a Bible study. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he's inviting family, he's inviting neighbors, he's inviting other doctors to the Bible study. This is what God is doing. So we find opportunities. The next photo shows us uh, at a dinner table as well. We, this is how we mostly hang out with people and introduce our faith to people. So we're socializing, we're doing these English clubs, and then we just live out our faith authentically, and we tell them, oh, we're Christians, and we're having an Easter program, and we're going to have a dinner in our home. We would love you to come and have dinner with us, and we're going to sing a Christian song after dinner, and we're going to have a story about Jesus after we, after we do that. And guess what? They're coming. <laughs> They want to listen. They want to hear. They want to understand. Those are all Turks sitting around us. I think there's one Syrian in that picture. All are Turks sitting in that picture. This is our Christmas party. And here are the people from all over the Middle East coming. To, again, we're sharing the great, we're singing the, the Christmas hymns. We're sharing the Christmas story. The next photo shows our last Christmas party. Now there's a lot of Russians in this picture because of the Russian-Ukrainian war. A lot of Russians came into Turkey and they found us. And we were having a game night where the, the Russians love to play mafia. Anybody play the game mafia? I mean, they're 
they, they love it, you know? But then we hang out with them. They're all coming. And they say, hey, we're having Christmas. Would you come? They come. The girl in the back with her hands raised, she was leaving our house at Christmas. She says, this was the best day of my year. Thank you so much. And we, we, we sang the Christmas carols again. We had the story. The next photo shows the couple that was in the front getting married. They didn't, weren't believers when they came to our Christian, our, our, our programs. And they said, we want to know more about the Bible. They came to the Lord, but they weren't married. They were living together. You know, we just said, the Bible says you should get married. They said, okay. <laughs> and we married them right there on the beach in, in, uh, in Turkey. The next photo shows one of our other English students becoming a, a father of Jesus Christ. He's a Turk. Look how big he is. And we're baptizing him in the Mediterranean Sea. Hallelujah. This is one of our teammates and one of the Turkish. Look at the Turkish pastor, how small he is and how big he is. They're coming to the Lord. Hallelujah. Without a church building. Just loving people. Just hanging out with people. Just sharing our life in front of them and inviting them to discover Jesus with us. Hallelujah. Inviting them to read the Bible with us. I want to show a scripture before I give another testimony. Turn to the book of Colossians. I think we're going to have it on the screen for you. Colossians chapter 1. Paul is writing to the Colossians. Now, Paul didn't start the church in Colossae. Now, Colossae is present-day Turkey. A lot of the books in the Bible, New Testament, are present-day Turkey. So Colossae, not too far from where I live even now, uh, Paul's writing to him. He says this, this same good news that came to you, it's going out all over the world. It's bearing fruit everywhere. I think Arlena said it this morning, it's changing lives. Hallelujah. How many, the gospel came to you and it changed your life? Praise God, the good news. It changes us. It changes our lives. These Turks, their lives are being changed. If my wife was here, she would, she would give a testimony about the girls she's interacting with and say, I'm, I'm changing, I'm changing. Hallelujah. It changes us. And it says it's changing other people's lives just as it changed your life. How? It says just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and you understood, and it could add the words believed, the truth about God's wonderful grace. This is the good news. Amen? God has grace for us. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to earn it. God freely gives it to us when we believe, when we understand the truth about God's wonderful love. And this is, this is what's happening in our part of the world. Now, look at the next verse, though. This is wonderful. Colossians 7 says, You learn, 1 7, the good news from Epaphras, not from Paul, from Epaphras. Who is Epaphras? He's our beloved co worker, Paul says. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. And if you go to the next portion in chapter 4 of Colossians, he says again, Epaphras is a member of your own fellowship. He's a servant of Christ Jesus. He's sending you his greetings. So I stop there a moment. Who is Epaphras? Somehow the gospel came to Epaphras. How many are glad the gospel came to you? Amen? <laughs> I don't know how it came to you, but it came to you. Maybe this church, maybe a friend, maybe a relative, maybe your parents introduced when you were a child, but the gospel came to you. And, and think about your parents. Someone introduced it to them or their, your grandparents or somewhere in your family line. The gospel came to your family. Hallelujah. It changed your family. It changed the dynamics. And Papaphras somehow heard the word of Christ, word the word of God, and he brings it where? He brings it back to his family. He brings it back to his city. He brings it back to his neighbors. So Epaphras planted the church in Colossae. And he, he is he's sending his, he's teaching others, he's sharing others. But where, in the, back in the first chapter, where's Epaphras now? He's with Paul, right? He's traveling with Paul. He's not in Colossae. He's somewhere wherever Paul is and writing this letter back to the church at Colossae. So now he's traveling out. I always say this, the missionary has two definitions. One is one who brings good news. Amen? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? How many want beautiful feet in the house? Amen? <laughs> that's, what, that's what Jesus says. That's beautiful feet. If you bring the good news to somebody, if you share your faith with someone, if you tell somebody else about what he's done in your life, that's good news. Going back to Romans 10, I, I told you that Ali John, I used that scripture to introduce him to the Lord. 
And uh, it goes on in that passage, one of the verses says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him if they don't believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? Now listen, Jesus' name has gone all over the world, but many don't understand the truth, right, about his wonderful grace. They're still blinded in Islam, in the Muslim world, uh, that, you know, there's no grace. It's all works-based, and it's all really Allah. All, you know, it's just his mercy. We're dependent upon him. There's really nothing I can do. That's kind of their attitude. I just got to live my life and try to be good, and, and my, my destiny is in his hands, whatever he decides. But the truth is, God has grace for us. Hallelujah. And it changes our lives when we understand this truth. And so Epaphras is now with Paul declaring this. So he said, it's one who brings grief. So he says, how can they call him if they don't believe? But how can they hear unless someone what? Tells them. Someone's got to tell them. God didn't commission the angels. Who did he commission to tell others? Us. Amen. We are all called to share our faith. We're all called to go into what God's called us to do. And this is what Epaphras is doing as he's gone out. So not only are we one who shares good news, but the end it goes up. And then how can they tell them unless they are sent? That's what Paul said. How can they call them unless they are sent? It's a partnership what we're doing here today to emphasizing kingdom builders. Listen, people aren't calling and asking me to come to Turkey and share the good news from Turkey. Uh, basically, I'm there undercover as, a, as, a, as an M. Uh, I have to go there just as a, a regular person, as a tourist, uh, a retired person describing myself. But I can be Christian. You know, I can, I can be authentic. Hallelujah. I can be who I am, and I can, I can share my love with people. And so we're here in this context doing that. And, uh, and so we can't do it unless we have partners to send us. Hallelujah. So you've sent us. Well, you prayed for us. We say thank you. So this is the work. Now, I have two more testimonies I just want to show with you quickly. Look at the next screen on here. We've been doing all these things. And I want to emphasize, like, like a farmer, we're like farmers. We have a field. And uh, the, what's the first thing you have to do if you want to get a crop from that field? What do you have to do? We have to cultivate the soil, right? You've got to get the soil ready. and you've got to, So that's part of what we all have to do. God has a field for every single one of us to enter. God has a field for every one of us to work in. My field's in Turkey right now. But I used to have my field in Boston. I used to have a field in Valley Forge area. But, now, but you have a field right here. Maybe there's a field God's calling you to. You have to enter that field. How do we enter that field? I had to learn Turkish. Now, that's not easy in your 50s. <laughs> I had to learn a new language. And, and uh, you know, I can get by. I can talk. But it's, it's hard to go deep. And that's God's opened this tremendous door through English for us. But you've got to understand the culture, the people that God's calling you to, do, to, to reach, who they are, how they think, how they act, what's this going to do to, to reach them. And once we enter that field, of course, that's God's calling. We have to understand his calling. We have to obey. And I love that song we sang today, How Can I Stay When You Tell Me To Go? Amen? We all have a field to go into. We enter that field. Once we cultivate the field, enter the field, what's the next step? We've got to sow seed, Right? we got to plant seed. That's what we're doing. We're in all these socials, all these activities. We're planting seeds. We're building friendships. We're showing the love of Christ. Hallelujah. And some people's hearts are opening up. Let me tell you about Ilhan, who's in the picture here. He came to one of our socials, one of our game nights when he's 19 years old, about two, maybe two and a half years ago now. And uh, he loved us. Man, he loved our personality. He loved our energy. And he goes, man, I want to be like you guys. I want to be your best friend. I, I was about a year and a half later, he's, we were discipling in some Bible studies. He's, I'm sitting across from him. He goes, you know, you're my best friend. I'm like 40 years older than him, you know? <laughs> but he so much loves the Spirit of God in us, amen, and the work of God in us. And I wanna, so I says, Ilhan, if you really want to know, you've got to come to our Bible study, and you've got to you got to study God's word with us. So he comes to the first Bible study. He goes this. Oh, i got to tell you something. I'm not Muslim. I'm an atheist. Now, this is common in the Islamic world. 
there's a lot of young people who see Islam and what they th is being represented to them as God says, if that's God, I don't want it. I don't want it. I want it. I, I don't believe Iranians, the first Iranians we baptize, the same thing. There is no God. I've seen what people represent as God. I don't want it. I don't believe it. But then they keep experiencing God's love. Hallelujah. So he's 19. He comes. He comes. We tell, that's okay. Come to the Bible study. Uh, several months later, something happened in Ilhan's life. He turned 20. And uh, nobody remembered his birthday. His family didn't. His friends didn't. Nobody baked him a cake, no presents, no happy birthday. So he was depressed. He's telling us the story later. He goes, I went, got some beer. I went down to the beach. I was going to get drunk. And all of a sudden, something happened. I felt a presence sit down next to me. And then he said, I felt these words being spoken into my heart. You're not alone. <laughs> he came back and he goes, uh, do you think that was God? <laughs> How many know that was God? Hallelujah. I said, yes, that's God. He loves you. He created you. He wants to come into your life. He wants to have a relationship with you. Well, it took several months later. Now we're in another Bible study. Other Turks are coming. This other young man, his English is not so great. We're talking about Jesus in some map. You know, we say, hey, Ilhan, translate in Turkish to say whom, what we just said, because we can't really do it, you know, as, but as good as you can. <laughs> so he does. And afterwards, we take a break. Sehun goes out for a cigarette, and um, Ilhan's is like, something's going on. He's, he's, he's emotional. Jenny goes around my wife, puts his arm around. I said, what's going on? I feel something. Something's changing in me. Hallelujah. I said, do you believe what you just told Sehun about Jesus? And are you ready to, to believe in him? He goes, yes, I believe, I believe. And he prayed right there, invited Jesus Christ to be the Lord of his life. And this is his baptism photo. Can someone give praise to God today? Hallelujah. <laughs> Once we sow the seed, God brings the harvest. God's working. God gives visions and dreams. God sits down to people at the beach. <laughs> God speaks into their heart. That's his work. Our work is to sow the seeds of love and then invite them to study God's word with us. Hallelujah. And to disciple, that's the third field. The third field is disciple them, sow God's word into them. Keep preaching the good news, preaching the word of God to them. And then finally, we build the church. Now, we've been doing all these activities that I've been telling you about without any facility. Only our home, other people's homes, the beaches, the parks, the cafes. But last year, I started having dreams. Now I know I'm an old man, right? What does the Bible say? Old men will dream. I used to have visions. Now I got dreams, right? <laughs> but I had three dreams last year. The beginning of the year, I had a dream about a building. Actually, I was standing looking at myself on a platform leading worship, and other people were in the auditorium so worshiping, and I just woke up and thought, just thought it was a cool dream. Three months later, I have a second dream. This time I'm in a classroom, people around listening to me. I'm teaching. There's even some uncomfortable a man who wants to get up and leave, and I knew it was a mixed crowd, but I was teaching the Word of God. Three, I woke up and I said, that's cool, but I didn't think much of it. Three months later, I have a third dream. This time, a pastor, international pastor, comes to Jenny and I and says, hey, we have a church. Would you come in and preach at our church, and would you lay hands on our people and pray for God's healing for them? Hallelujah. So I'm in my dream laying hands on people and praying for people, and I wake up from this dream, and I say, okay, God, you got my attention. How many know when God does something three times? He's speaking, right? <laughs> three times, right? Three, the, the, the sheet that Peter got was three times. Three times it had to come down till he got it. I said, okay, God, what are you doing? Just after that, I went to a small Turkish church, and I met someone I never met before. He was visiting, and he, I said, well, who, what are you doing? Well, I'm moving from Istanbul to your city, Antalya, to work with this building project called Mosaic. And I said, building project? I've heard something about this, but I don't really know. Tell me about it. So here is the picture of the building that was just built in our city this year. It's not a church. It's a cultural center, but it has Christian activities going inside of it. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So it's a coffee house. It's a workout area. There's a rock climbing gym in here. There's co-working spaces. When I met the director and told him all that we're doing, he says, we need you to bring all your activities into this building. And would you do your English clubs in here, your socials, your Bible studies? So our goal is to expand, because we've only been having to have groups about 10, 15, max 20, but now we can multiply. There's also a 150-seat auditorium in this building that's housing four different churches right now. An English, a Turkish, a Russian, and a Farsi Iranian church. Can someone give praise to God? <laughs> this, this building is a miracle. You know, it really is to, to have a Christian building and activity like this. You don't find it much in the Muslim world. God's at work. The last part of that uh, passage from Colossians talked about Epaphras. And it says, Paphras always thinks thinking about you guys in Colossae, and he's always praying for you. Look at the last verse there. It says, he always prays earnestly for you. He's always asking God to make you strong and perfect, fully confident you're following the whole will of God. Hallelujah. So prayer, we can't do any of this without prayer. God has the answers for all of us, for our field, to sow seed, to make disciples. And we say thank you again for this partnership. We're gonna close this time just praying, praying for the mission field, praying for workers. Turkey needs your prayers. Um, also, you know, the earthquake victims, you guys helped um, send some offerings that we were able to buy tents. And one of the girls that came to the Lord, her family was in the earthquakes and their, their homes, no, there was no deaths, but their homes collapsed. And uh, Lord, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for this great nation and what you're doing all over the Muslim world. God, this is one of the last great harvest fields that need to be harvested, Lord. Lord, we're there sowing seeds, but God, the task is so big. So many don't know you. So many haven't understood your grace. And we need more workers. We need more people, God, going and sharing and, and giving their testimonies. And Lord, we know you're showing up and God, we're praying for those young Turks that have given their life to you. Would you keep them? Would you protect them? Would you fill them with the Holy Spirit? Would you empower them, God? Would you help them to share their faith with their family and friends and their neighbors, oh God? And would you call them to, to be church planters? Call them to be leaders. Call them to be pastors, God, and to, to care for others, Lord, and, and grow them in their understanding of your grace and in your word. Thank you, God, for... Lord Kingsway, and all that they're doing to send and to support and to pray. And God, we give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.